perhaps the uh, Chinese economy right now is the largest economy in the world. We see the Chinese uh, investment not only um, um, in Asia, but also in Europe, in US. So in the past uh, few decades, we probably say that, okay, doing business in China because we have a lot of like uh, European investment in China. But right now, it's Chinese already going abroad, and not only individuals, but also companies, corporates, government, uh, state-owned uh, uh, communities, a lot of things. So I think we should be uh, considered as a community. And uh, that's why what I said, uh, with China, uh, with Chinese rather than in China. I, to be honest, I think it's easier than before because uh, uh, before it was only one way that, uh, for example, our European uh, companies, people going to China, that's one way. But right now, uh, Chinese also coming out, so Chinese already know a lot about, about Europe. So uh, we have this mutual understanding uh, based on a lot of uh, national level initiatives uh, in the past, uh, for example, One Belt, One Road. Uh, and that makes uh, each level of communication much easier. For example, at a government level, at institutional level, at a company level, even at individual level. I see that many of our audience today, they have, they have experience in China. It is a very broad uh, topic, mm -hmm. and we cannot um, we cannot just say everything. Uh, doing business with China, uh, if there's uh, let's say put it this way, if the problem happened, we cannot say that it is because of the cultural issues or institutional issues. If it is uh, succeed, we can also not say that because we know the culture, because in my view that the culture is keeps changing. Um, uh, due to the uh, uh, false uh, uh, industrialization era. So I think there is, my view is no culture difference. We should have a broad view, including several dimensions, uh, politics, institutions, uh, economics, uh, even education. So every dimension is combined together then keep, can give you the, you know, the input of mm -hmm. how to do business uh, with China. Mm -hmm. It's keep changing and also it's, uh, um, it's keep revising. And I think audience need to keep um, checking what happened in China, what happened with China at a macro level, but also at a macro level. Trust is always the first thing if you are as a human being. Uh, you first build up the trust, that's a personal level, uh, informal level, and then you have a confidence to have with your partners at a formal level, institutional level, doing business. Not only doing business, but also like uh, international affairs together, whatever. Between countries, the same. Trust is number one. So you should have the institutional system and public system there to guarantee everything is okay on the track. But also you need to have this kind of um, um, intimacy trust between each other to give each other's space to make some mistake, right? The trust is to allow you to make mistake and uh, uh, it's, it's something that of tolerance. So if you have that, you will have the persistence uh, being partner. If you can be a partner, everything can be solved. I probably have different views uh, from all the other scholars. I think uh, Guanxi is not only in China. Guanxi is everywhere, not only for Chinese. But also, I think, I think you must agree with me that Guanxi is also in Spain in Netherlands, in US, everywhere. Guanxi is just an, another pronunciation, another term of, of relationship in the West, right? And the Guanxi is, um, is, is more to the informal level, informal institutional level, rather than the formal institutional level. Mm -hmm. And the tradition of Chinese philosophy believe that the, the, the Guanxi can build uh, people's relationship closer to, 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 to solve the problems. That's in academic, we see Guanxi, this kind of the concept there. But in my view, again, it's same as the relationship in the West.
if you see Chinese restaurant in the world, mm -hmm. you will see that Chinese re restaurant everywhere. So from this very small and macro uh, snapshot, you will see that uh, every market is important for Chinese people. So of course, every market is very important for China. Because from Chinese perspective, every corner of this world is partner, is a friend. We don't have kind of like a discrimination. You are my enemy, you are my partner, or you are my, um, you are my uh, conflict parties. No, we don't have. So uh, US is important, of course, in terms of the trade. You can see the international trading uh, volume is important. But Europe, very important, especially for current China in the transition uh, period technology, service, organizational restructure, everything that China would like to learn from Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a good opportunity for both sides. For people, individual people, Spain always has a very good image for Chinese people. For women, of course, Chinese, uh, Spanish, football, very good image. For, uh, for tourists, it's, a, it's a one of the best places that Chinese people always want to travel, right? Mm -hmm. And Spain always contains very good technology in agriculture, in surveys, uh, in water, for example, in Barcelona, things like that. So, um, so far I didn't see any bad image mm -hmm. of uh, Spanish uh, uh, in Chinese eyes.